First look. The Crown. Netflix. Bickering over Europe and who governs Britain, economic upheaval and royal scandal, it is back to the future as the new series of Netflix as The Crown swings into the 1960s. The award-winning drama is one of the US-based streaming giant's biggest guns in the fight for subscribers, a battle now joined by Apple and Disney. The success of The Crown matters, not least to the company's share price. The third season opens in 1964 with the changing of the Thespian Guard. A delegation from the Royal Mail has arrived to show the Queen, now played by Olivia Colman, a new set of stamps. Beside them are ones of the young Elizabeth, Claire Foy. As her eyes flit from one to the other, Colman's Elizabeth says forlornly, age is rarely kind to anyone, but there we are, nothing one can do about it. One just has to get on with it. The burden of duty is a central theme of the series, but it applies largely to the Queen. Elsewhere, there is plenty of recklessness on display, much of it perpetrated by Princess Margaret, played by Helena Bonham Carter. Where Coleman's Elizabeth is a Cardian slippers presence, Bonham Carter's Margaret is a silk dressing gown at noon kind of gal. It is a close-run thing between the Queen's sister, a young Princess Anne, and Prince Philip as to who can be the most spectacularly rude. Margaret tops the bill for insults against Scotland. In one episode, while staying at the Glen, she visits Peebles to buy her lover a pair of swimming trunks. Oh God, we've stumbled on an experiment in inbreeding, she remarks on getting out of the car. Elsewhere, President Johnson, invited to Balmoral in a bid to get an American bailout for the struggling British economy, slates the Queen's Scottish home as a creepy haunted castle. Did they say such things? Creator Peter Morgan has always said the lavishly shot series draws on documented sources, but in the end it is a drama, an imagining of history. Even so, after the umpteenth time of saying, no, really, did that happen? And rushing to Google and the bookshelves, I gave up trying to fact check. Some scenes and plot twists were so outrageous the piece began to stray uncomfortably into soap opera territory. It felt like watching Dynasty Sands the shoulder pads. On other occasions the drama was over-engineered, and the dialogue too on the nose, as when the Queen disagreed publicly with Anthony Blunt, spy and surveyor of the royal pictures, about fakes. Where the crown excels is as a political drama. We see Harold Wilson's first audience with the Queen, and watch their relationship grow from wariness on her part to something close to friendship. She finds Heath a chilly bore. We see, too, the younger royals coming up. Charles meeting, and losing first love Camilla. Old wounds are reopened with the death of the Duke of Winds. For more on this story, visit the news article link.